Let's go! It's Brooklyn in the bridge. <laughs> What's going on, crypto people? It is the crypto seed. What's good? Interesting, interesting time. What's going on with XRP right now? What is going on with XRP right now? Well, oh, I didn't know I could do that. That's interesting. Huh. I didn't know I could do that. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. What's going on, crypto people? I keep drinking this. What's going on here? There it is. South Texas crypto is in the building. What's going on? <laughs> Michael Old Two is in the building. What's going on? What's going on, fam? Life is good. You're early. I'm early. We're all early adopters in this new asset class. I freaking love it. I absolutely love it. Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is a digital asset space. What an interesting time to be an early adopter in this new asset class that is a digital asset space. You and I, my friends, we're playing a game that 99.99% of the masses, well, they don't even know is being played. And we are winning. Pookie Pookie is in the building. What's going on, Rodwell? No break. It's good to see you this morning. The banks are borrowing money at record levels to try to stay solvent. The banking crisis is here. They're trying to hide it. Record level of withdrawals from the smaller and regional banks into the bigger banks is something to pay attention to for sure. I mean, cool, SVB got bought out by First Citizens Bank. Cool. But what does that mean for you and I? How are we protecting ourselves and preparing for this banking crisis? We made the move to Fidelity for two thirds of our accounts, or that's not even right. That's not right either. That's not the right number. Three fourths of our accounts. But we may consider a local, more reason, not local, but a more, uh, well, there are more branches like a Bank of America. Uh, or Chase, I don't know. I don't know about the whole Chase thing. We'll see. But we got to prepare. We got to prepare because, uh, yeah, it is looking not great at all. It is looking not great at all. Shout out to Spritz Finance for providing such an awesome off ramp from your crypto into your account, your bank account. Love it. Absolutely love Spritz Finance. And boy, paying your bills with crypto, I got to tell you. That is very, very exciting. I'm going to add some accounts. Let's do some accounts while we're hanging out on the stream today because uh, I don't know how to do the whole graying out thing while I'm live, unlike uh, the crypto dad. <laughs> but I will add some accounts or, or have the site find some accounts. I can't wait to share that with you guys um, as well. So again, interesting time to be early in this space. What's going on there? Why did I do that? Hmm. Ash W, I think his name is Ash W. Bennington. Interesting thread on Flare Networks. The game changing, game changing um, layer one. Flare Networks is doing its thing. Billionaire agents in the building. Good morning to you, sir. Flare Networks is doing its thing. We're going to go over, cover some stuff from Ash W. And we're also going to go over this latest news for about Hong Kong. How is it that Hong Kong is, is looking to become a crypto hub and the United States got Operation Choke Point in full effect? What is going on with that? 
Rodwell says, we need a bailout. They have been robbing us without question. We need a bailout. The citizens need a bailout. I mean, tell you what, fam, I came across one of the most interesting videos uh, last night in the wee, wee hours of the morning. It was I had to watch this thing. I was supposed to be in bed for sure, but I had to watch this thing over an hour and 15 minutes. And I, yeah, it was uh, eye-opening. It was eye-opening about this country. It was very, very eye-opening. I, and um, I think in order for a country to heal, it has to know the truth. And there, there, there is Michael McKenzie, what's going on? Michael McKenzie says, I was unsubscribed from every one of my crypto channels. Really? Anyone else have this issue? That's interesting. But I was saying, I watched this video about the uh, the myth, uh, the uh, the myth of American history or the American history myth. Uh, that wasn't the title of the video, but it was it just kind of this thing that has been going around uh, on uh, on social media. And I got to tell you, uh, I would highly I'm, I'm going to get the link, but I, I downloaded this video because I'm I'm concerned that YouTube would actually take this thing off. Uh, but it was a very, very interesting video on the reality uh, and the, the type of slavery in this country and the reality behind it was fascinating uh, to me because it goes beyond the the awful, dreadful thing that happened in this country in regards to slavery. Uh, from a so American history and slant social studies teacher. <laughs> interesting. I'm going to share it. Look, I don't think that we can, we have to first heal as a nation uh, and uh, understand where the real enemy lies. Uh, the vast majority of people in this country have been taught that uh, people who don't look like us are the enemy. When the reality, the reality has been that it is the nation's governments that have been the real enemy. That's the reality of the situation. And uh, I don't think we can begin to heal unless we begin to understand the truth. I'm going to tell you, pookie pookie, that was uh, interesting. It, it was interesting. And you should have seen the comments in the video. I've never seen a video where so many people were thanking the, the content creator for doing the video. Thank you, they kept saying. Thank you for telling the truth. Thank you for uh, educating me on the truth. Thank you for exposing the fact that I have been lied to throughout junior public school, junior high school, middle school, and high school to the truth. It, I mean, it, unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable stuff. I can't wait to share it. And why do I feel like that this uh, live stream is stalled? Is it stalled? Because this thing is not updating at all. Updating at all. I hope you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear me okay? And is it uh is the video live on your end? Because it doesn't look like it's live on my end. So please let me know. Do you feel like it's live? Can you hear me live? Oh yeah, where is my uh thing at? What's going on, Kevin Lant? Where is my Zoom thing at? Huh, hold on a second. Where is my bar? Okay, got it. Let's go over the numbers because, again, the market is just doing what the market does. We'll get into the numbers. I guess the live stream is working okay. Sound good rolling. Okay, thank you guys. Kevin Land, what's going on, bro? Good to see you. Let me cover this stuff. So this is uh London, UK in the house. What's going on, London? What's cracking siege? Life is good, bro. What's good with you? Interesting stuff. I was telling uh uh people that uh Bogle that I came across a very interesting video uh, about the uh the American history myth. And boy, what it was it an eye-opening experience. 
And again, I think in order for this nation to begin to heal, we have to we have to know the truth so that we can begin to heal. Hugely important. Yeah, I saw that South Texas crypto. South Texas crypto says five banks in France raided, including HSBC. Soon to be a one billion dollar fine and then continues business. Probably, probably. Yeah, I saw that. It's just crazy. Let's let's get over. This. Let's get into this stuff because, uh, by the way, anybody try the uh, the Spritz app app dot Spritz dot finance? Anyone try that yet? Pay some bills in crypto. Anyone try it yet? Let's go over these numbers real quick. I can't wait to share that video with you guys. I'm going to leave a link to that video because again. I don't think we can begin to heal. First of all, we got to recognize who the true enemy. Who, you know, we say in this channel, the mantra for this channel is in our out and is in our outro of Bogo. And it says, part of it says, old money doesn't want you to win. And the reality is, is that if there's been an establishment that doesn't want the citizens winning. They want to have the citizens struggling in order to be able to uh, have its citizens feel like they're relying and dependent upon the entity. And the 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 uh, the game plan was if we could just get them warring with one another. Uh, yep, you can pay in USDC. South Texas Crypto says, for Spritz, can he pay bills in USDC? Yep. Since paying in other crypto would be tax event. Yep. He can pay in USDC. Yes, sir. You sure can. You sure can. And there's going to be a link in this description. And I'll play, make sure I put, put a link in the chat as well for you guys. But yeah, I'm excited about it. You get $50. I get $50. And I'm not sure if the $50 is just something in your account or is it $50 towards future bills, right? Make a bill get $10 off, make a payment, get $10 off. I'm not sure what the $50 look like, but yep. Yep, yep, yep. Kevin Chapita, what's going on, my guy? It's been a while. Hey, Siege. How are you keeping, brother? Life is good. Coming to your town in May with fam. What town? You coming? Are you coming to Texas? Awesome. Let's keep in touch. Greetings from Zimbabwe and South Africa. I love it. Yes, let's definitely keep in touch, Kevin, Kevin, for sure. You know, you got my email for the channel, right? You have my email for the channel, Kevin. Bogo says, "Yeah, I believe that, but they can't stop us this time around. No, nope, no, nope, can't, can't do it. Absolutely cannot do it. That's what this whole new asset class <laughs> is all about, without question." All right, so let's get into uh, the numbers. On CoinGecko, real quick. Let me refresh. Shout out to CoinGecko. I love CoinGecko.com app uh, uh, website. Love the app. Screw Coin Market Cap, as far as I'm concerned. Screw Coin Market Cap. So the total cryptocurrency market cap is at 1.18 trillion. It's down two percent within the last 24 hours. Interestingly enough, the Bitcoin dominance is at 44.3 percent, which means there is an uh, an alt season in happening today. <laughs> now a Bitcoin dominance at 44%. Nope. Ethereum is trading at $1,741. And XRP is over 50 cents. XRP is over 50 cents. I'm just trying to understand that. And my guess is there are people in the know who, who have a really good sense of what's going to happen here in a few days to a few weeks. And nothing gets kept a secret. And it just feels like whether it might be uh, an old, uh, a potential ODL person getting on ODL because they got the inside scoop of what looks like will be a summary judgment, right? Or some of the inside people who got the, who are in the know are beginning to Scoop up more XRP because they know what's about to happen. It could be the market makers in the ecosystem that are in on the inside and somehow got a, a slight hint, right? Or uh or 
you know, had conversations that lean towards XRP getting the clarity that the market makers may need to continue doing what they're doing. Something's going on. You, 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 what's going on there? I, I can't understand. Why is XRP up 32% on the seven day? 32% on the seven day. Why four is that going on? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me, Kevin. Makes no sense to me. I mean, it's cool to see it. It's cool to see it, but I need at least an all-time high in XRP to even begin to open up the ledger. To even begin to open up the ledger, I need an all-time high, at least that previous all-time high. I need a previous all-time high to for me to begin to do it. And I told you guys, I'll share with you that I had been liquidating an XRP, putting a, a percentage of XRP into uh, other ecosystems that I felt would perhaps do some things in these, you know, uh, in relation to Arbitrum or ZK Sync and those ecosystems around airdrops so for a little bit of a, a little bit of a play, 50%, 100%, 200% in 30 to 45 days. Because uh, you could turn, right, you can turn 1,000 into 1,500, 1,000 into 2,000 in a short period of time. A little bit of a gamble with a little bit of extra XRP. So can someone explain to me why is XRP doing what it's doing? I I can't. I can't. I can't understand it. I can't explain it. Let me go through. Do I want to go over the uh, the bank thing? Yeah, let's go over this first. This is from the Kabasi letter, Kabisi letter, Kabasi letter. <laughs> Highly recommend you follow this uh, guy and what he's putting out. The Fed just reported, this is a few days old, March 25th. Yeah. The Fed just reported that United States banks borrowed $475 billion last week as the banking crisis continued. Meanwhile, over $500 billion has been withdrawn from small banks in two weeks. Half a trillion dollars since the SBB collapsed. We did some research and the numbers are alarming. United States banks borrowed $475 billion last week. But look at the breakdown. Large banks borrowed $250 billion. Small banks borrowed $250 billion. The small banks are borrowing just as much as the large banks. And foreign related banks. More than 25 billion. Small banks borrow the same amount as large. Relative to their size, small banks borrow twice as much as large banks. <laughs> Furthermore, according to JP Morgan, one trillion dollars has been withdrawn from the most valuable or most vulnerable, the most vulnerable banks over the last two years when the Fed started raising rates. However, 500 billion of this has been withdrawn since the collapse. Of SBB. So over the last two years, it's been more than a trillion, but in the last two weeks, 500 billion of that occurred. This is by far a record. I'm feeling relatively comfortable with uh, Fidelity. Fidelity has a cash account um, that you can use for checking in and whatever. You may want to use it for. Uh, I feel comfortable with that. Uh, we have a JP Morgan Chase account. I just don't like the service there. So I don't know if I'll use it. But new Fed data shows banks lost 100 billion in deposits just last week. Just last week, 100 billion in deposits. Large banks, 67, more than 67 billion. So they're taking them out of large banks, probably put them in, in money markets as well, or feeling like they just need to hold on to it. I, heard, I was listening to Lynette Zhang talking about the fiat dollar, and she called it a forced tool for barter. Fiat currency, a forced tool. <laughs> for barter. And we say in this channel all the time about the money and its monetary policy being shoved down our throats as opposed to having the choice to choose our own form of money and the monetary policy that comes with it. Small banks, uh, well, so large banks increased their deposits by more than 67 billion. Small banks 
lost over 120 billion withdrawn from small banks. Foreign related banks lost 45 billion to withdrawals. The worst part is that SVB is a large bank in their in their model, a large bank. So a collapsed bank is considered a large bank and let and yet and still with that bank collapsing, large banks took in more than $67 billion. It says, where are all these withdrawals going? JP Morgan research shows, shows half of this money going to government money market funds and other and the other half to larger and safer banks quote unquote. Small banks continue to feel the pain while large banks are ironically winning the banking crisis. Ugh. According to the Wall Street Journal, nearly 200 banks are still facing the same issues as SVB. I'm gonna share a chart with you that is alarming. The crisis has spread to Europe with the collapse of Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank credit default swaps hitting a four-year high. Meanwhile, there is still not a solution. Last week, the Treasury Secretary Yellen said the U.S. was considering backing all deposits in about 48 hours. She changed her mind on that, by the way. One day later, she said the U.S. is no longer considering this. Okay, he said one day. I thought it was 48 hours. Bank stocks fell with regional bank ETF making a new low. This is not great. Where is the chart that I had that I wanted to share with you guys? Tighter credit conditions are coming. Banks to the right of same of uh, Silicon Valley Bank are likely to start reorganizing their balance sheet. I mean, take a look at this chart. Here's Silicon Valley Bank right here. To the left of those are pretty fairly safe in this market. But look to the right. That is a big number of banks. HSBC is right here. You got Discover Bank on here. Signature Bank is on here to the right as well. East, uh, East Valley, Western Ally, First Houston, Zions. This is some banks I've never heard of. Northern Regions, Key Bank, Morgan Stanley Bank, Morgan Stanley. Doesn't that fall, fall under the umbrella of JP Morgan? So Morgan Stanley and Chase Bank, I would imagine would fall under that same category. But to the left of that, though, however, it's a little confusing to me. So maybe Morgan Stanley is different than JP Morgan. JP Morgan appears to be the, the safest. Does that include their Chase Bank? I don't know. Bank of America, Citibank, Wells Fargo, something called U.S. Bank, PNC Bank. Interesting. Interesting that PNC is there. Trust, Goldman Sachs, Capital One, and TD. And this is here, uh, are likely start ranking the balance sheets. And this is the percentage and how this ranked. 15%, 24% in reference to having to reorganize their balance sheet. So PNC Bank might be one we might consider. Citibank, um, the challenge always is going to be which one of these for us is going to be which one of these banks are crypto friendly. I have no word on PNC Bank or Citibank being crypto friendly. You would think that Bank of America would be crypto friendly, but we don't know. I don't know. Anyone bank with Bank of America or PNC? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat if you bank with Bank of America or PNC Bank. What's going on here? Come on. There it is. We got to find a a safe place, fam, to put our money that is also going to be 
crypto friendly. We stayed with our regional bank for so long because we've never had a single issue, a single issue with uh, any digital any digital asset transaction ever. I'll put it in here in, in uh, for you, South Texas Crypto. There it is right there, South Texas Crypto. Again, I've been really impressed with this app. I really have. And I love the idea of being able to pay my bills in crypto. I love that. I absolutely love, 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 love that. Oh, you mean... um. Yeah, I didn't put it in the description yet, but I guess I could do it now. Do, 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 do. That's a good idea. South Texas Crypto's on it. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Um, pay your bills with crypto. So anybody, anybody use you? Crypto, offer crypto into bank card. And my VPN we do that as well. Please let me know if any of you guys use uh Bank of America or PNC Bank. Because we, you know, we gotta have we gotta have the crypto friendly thing. I mean right, we gotta have that. If it's not crypto friendly, I don't want to be going through any hassles of uh dealing with some transactions. You know what I mean? Don't like that. Let's do this again. You world's best is the there it is there. There it is there now, South Texas crypto. Thank you for letting me know about that. I did not put those in there. Definitely appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. So what's the word? Anybody? Uh, let's see. Let's check. Anybody using? Wells Fargo. Mm. Jay Coin, what's good, bro? Jay Coin says, never had an issue with transfer or withdrawal after buying or selling in seven years with Wells Fargo. Is that right? I used to be a Wells Fargo member for, for probably more than 10 years. I was a Wells Fargo person. Great to know. Thank you for sharing, Jay Corn. And Wells Fargo was to the left on that chart that I shared. Look, we got it. You know. I know Wells Fargo, you know, they got busted for, for doing some crazy craziness stuff, right? Michael Marchese says, when this case ends, what happens to the status of other assets if they get wrapped in XRP? If they get wrapped in XRP? What's going on, XRP Magnificent? Good to see you checking in this morning. Alex Yeet is in the freaking building. How are you, bro? Are you driving? Be safe on the roads out there, my friend. We're talking about uh, the banks and the regional banks and the likelihood of a challenge going on. Um, with um, them being insolvent. Michael McKenzie says, no problems here with uh, with Wells Fargo. Okay, maybe we go back to Wells Fargo. I used to have two accounts, one account with Wells and one with our regional bank. Maybe we do that, maybe we do that. 
maybe Wells Fargo will be a better experience in the state of Texas as opposed to in Virginia. I don't know. We'll see. Thanks for sharing that. So no, it looks like no one here is using Bank of America or PNC, huh? So that's the latest and greatest deal with the banking crisis. Just not, uh, right? The, their alarms have been sounded, really. And, you know, I feel like we have to, uh, number one, uh, be in a position that we don't have to worry about our particular bank um, going insolvent. And again, um, I share with you guys, I got a letter from our personal bank. And um, when you get the letter saying everything's OK, we're fine, we have this fine history to, to like to me, uh, that is a, a sounding of alarm because this is what happened with Celsius Networks. This is what happened with Three Hours Carol, Three Hours Capital and uh, Voyager. You know, Block Five said the same letter, said, you know, everything's fine. So to me, that's like an alarm bell, you know. Oh, this this is why this is not going. Maybe that's why that is not updating. So that was the alarm here. Let me go over um went over the ladder. Jay Corn says, plus Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo is big and diversified and not subject right away to a banking collapse. Okay, that's good to know. Digital functions in the building. What's good? Hey, see, he's been with Wells Fargo for the past 30 years. No issues with crypto purchases. Nice. Okay, great to know. We can go, we can return to Wells Fargo. We can return. <laughs> we can return to Wells Fargo. We can return. Yep. That's definitely great to hear. Yeah, because this, you know, they got the branches. They were on the left side of this chart, which I think is important. Where was the chart at? Outlook for United States regional banks. Let me see here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. So Wells Fargo. Yeah, number four. So that's good. That is good. Okay, that's good. I'll let Miss Crypto C's know about that. I didn't even think about it, but that is definitely good to know for sure. Oh, hey, stream is finally catching up. It's great to see that. Ben with Wells Fargo. Does anyone know of any crypto friendly banks in England yet? David is asking, uh, family, does anyone know of any crypto friendly banks in England yet? All right, thanks. Wells Fargo is good. All right, uh, South Texas Crypto, you see those, uh, the link should be in the descriptions there. Thank you for letting me know. And also, by the way, I'm supposed to be. Um, doing this as well, what's going on here? So that's good to know. I'm going to go over this Flare Network thing. I think it's important. It's a nice thread from Ash W. Did I do it? I did do it. Cool. Because, look, we're blessed to be early on a layer one, and I think we just can't. I think it's important to share, share the fact that we're early to a layer one. We, as a community, have an opportunity to play a large part in this success. Now, the layer one has to do their part, right? They got to get things working. They got to get the ecosystem right. They got to, you know, you know, follow their roadmap for decentralization, right? Uh, but the active participation uh, uh, by us as a community plays a significant role in the success or failure of a platform, right? And this is a blockchain, uh, and some say ecosystem. So many it says Ash W here at Banker underscore DeFi on Twitter. Many of you may be following me for my research and insights. I share my thoughts on Flare Network's design and its potential in creating a powerful network economy. I've also shared analysis and reflections on key developments that could occur largely on the layer one, on layer one, 
on the layer one. Flare is a, na a nascent network and building takes time. Ultimately, we are still in the experimental phases of blockchain-based economies. Real technology takes time. To rush is to disrespect the fragility of open systems. Remember, we're building decentralized economies. Reality is, reality is on Flare, we're still at the very beginning. Most people on crypto Twitter are probably speculators, and that's totally fine. But it serves our ecosystem none to focus on things other than that which brings value to the network. At the moment, getting a network of data providers right is absolutely critical. Whether we solve these issues now or later, we will need to solve it regardless. So what are the issues? Colluders and bad providers, value extractors. Rewards distribution design is not supporting the largest number of good providers. Misrepresented vote power from the community. Misrepresented. In my mind, I'm seeing healthy actions from the foundation and from our, and from our data providers and moving the protocol towards solving the above issues. If they're not clear to you, then perhaps you are not focusing on the right things. Developments that increase the network's value. I will share my thoughts on point three, misrepresented vote power from the community. Basically, vote power is every Flare token holder's ability to support another address with the network's core services. When you delegate, you are enshrining your power to that particular data provider. Your power is your choice and your say as a citizen of this network economy. Who you support dictates the type of data and services you are bringing into the network. Support a data provider bringing in bad data. That data has a higher probability of impacting the network, however insignificant it might be. Since the core value proposition of Flare is this decentralized acquisition and relay of data of data from to everywhere from and to everywhere supporting bad data hinders flare so how do we support good data providers first it's important to define what makes a provider good a good provider should be someone who increases the value of the network through their services after research some surveys and engaging with all stakeholders in this network we think a good provider uses unique and safe algorithms for feeding in data, diverse and secure infrastructure, and resources to build services and other value add to benefit the ecosystem. What comes to mind to me is the FTSU AUs of the world. Other bonuses that make a good provider even better, I think, would include a strong public presence with transparency and accountability, responsible financial management of network rewards. By the way, Mickey B. Fresh has is an STSO provider as well. Unfortunately, it's hardly known within the community who the good providers are. Again, one reason for this issue is that we are still in the early stages of the network and the protocol incentivizes are totally in incentivizing reward rates. Right? People look at the reward weights. The first thing they look at as well, how much are they paying in rewards? True. The other reason is that there isn't information available with regards to the network of data providers. This means that even if delegators wish to support good data providers, it is very difficult to do so. This is the mis misrepresented vote power issue. Yep, I agree. As per the SPO 01 and 02, the rewards distribution to data providers is converging. Reward rates will approach a shared equilibrium. This means that vote power chasing reward rates will only be at maximal opportunity cost since they're least likely supporting other good values. Right? So he's kind of exposing the real deal. Yeah, you keep paying attention to the reward rates. And you're not looking at the other value adds or the lack of value adds to the network, to the overall network, right? 
So if they're not getting their data right, but they're paying high reward weight, is that really adding value to the network? They got higher reward weights, but they're not adding any other value adds to the network. These are the things that we should be considering, and this is why they proposed those changes to pass. This means that both power chasing reward weights will only be at maximum opportunity cost since they're least likely supporting other good values. At this point, both power delegators will be looking at other properties of a data provider to base their support on. We think at this point, those five points that make up a good provider will be internalized. We also think delegators need not wait for this point. I certainly don't want to wait for that point. It would take a long time if the ecosystem relies purely on protocol-driven changes to reward the best data provider teams. This is why we have a community. 100%. Together, together with Eric Martin, 28. Eric, who is Eric Martinez, currently building on the dashboard Flare used to run Sigma Oracle on Sernberg. I am an aerospace engineer and a software developer. So together with Eric Martinez, we, we're launching Flare Dashboards.io. And I guess that includes Ash W and these people together. In less than 12 hours, Flare Dashboard.io at Dashboard Flare underscore flare on Twitter will display self-submitted provider team information. That is information on how a particular provider team operates their time series Oracle and how they plan to create value for the flare ecosystem. Interesting. I like that. Let me do this. The platform itself will be in its earliest form, so many improvements and changes are yet to come. However, community also shouldn't just rely on the efforts of the FD team. There are many ways in which community can help accelerate the adoption of Flare Dashboard. Once Flare Dashboard.io is live, it will be clear how the community can take action. This is a community effort with a clear vision. Love it. Love this, my friend to bring all providers a platform to share the best of their data services and for all community delegators, people who get the flare and wrap the flare, then choose to delegate that flare, but challenge them to do the same as well. Love it. That is why Flare's that, that is why Flare Dashboard.io's motto is information for the community by the community. We hope community enjoys launch and makes use of the information available. As Flare participants, we will create the change. We will create the change. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love that, guys. So there it is. Let's see here. Is, is, it, is it up yet? It doesn't look like it's up. That didn't work. Flare dashboard.io. Let's try and refresh it, see if it comes up. It could always be my laptop for sure. Make no mistake about it. Hmm. Don't know why that didn't work. Where? Ash B O A R D. Uh, It ain't up and running yet, I guess. Oh, it's not up. Ask W, thank you for sharing it, my friend. We'll keep an eye on that for sure. Michael O2. Uh, Michael Marquise said, isn't MuPay in England? The only crypto friendly bank in the UK is your own ledger, says Michael O2. <laughs> if you can stake your coins in your own wallet, don't bother. Thanks, Michael, says David. Yeah, it's true. On a ledger, you can do some staking stuff. 
right? You can get on that ledger live and you can do your stake in there. That is 1000% correct. So we found out that Wells Fargo is crypto friendly. That's great to know. That's very great, 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 great to know. Crypto friendly is important. Uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of the no activity fees. And I know Wells Fargo has that kind of no activity fee stuff. You know, if you, you know, if you're just parking some cash and you're not doing anything, I don't like those no activity fees. Any of you guys that are Wells Fargo, uh, that have accounts at Wells Fargo, ever experienced the, the no activity fee? Now, this was, you know, this is almost 15 years ago, if not longer, when I had uh, an account at Wells Fargo. So we'll see. We'll see how they go. So there it is, guys. Let me share uh, what Michael uh, with uh, South Texas Crypto was uh, was doing. I wanted some info on. Pay your bills with crypto and it's an off ramp. And the off ramp is to a card, I believe. Let's do that. It's app.finance. And you can sign up for an account here. You can sign up. You can sign in with Google. And you can start an account here. I really, really like it. Share your Sprint for internal link, earn rewards as your friends, qualifying bill payments or Sprint card funding clears, pay off your bills, or fund your own Sprint card with your. Referral rewards with your referral rewards. And let me do this. This is probably a better thing to do is to, let's see, got out of here, close this. And let me go over to uh, YouTube and find this one. Unfortunately, fam, I don't know how to do the graying out of my personal information. <laughs> um, let's see something. Like the crypto dad does, but let me see if I can find his video right away. <laughs> There's the coin ledger. I can probably just search my history if I need to, but let's see if I can find it. Wow, he did this video a long time ago, huh? Okay, yeah. And see, that's not right. The world. All right. There it is. Pay your bills and off ramp crypto direct to your bank using splits. There it is right there. Of course, he's got his stuff hooked up to his ledger. Oh, that was actually the uh, authorization step, right? We need to authorize that coin uh, to pay 
connected to this service, right? And here it is right here. Authorization step. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, make the payment itself. We'll click pay with stablecoin again. Notice that I've got other coins that I could use as well, but I'm gonna stick with US dollar coin at this point. We'll click pay with USDC here. MetaMask will come up again. Uh, notice we've got really cheap fees here. We'll click confirm. And he's got the really cheap the fees. Transaction well, on our device. He's got the really cheap fees because what, what, what the Spritz allows you to do as well is to choose your network. So you can use your USDC on Polygon network as opposed to the Ethereum network, which is uh, really, really good. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere way in the background that consensus in or something is behind this Spritz app. That would not surprise me at all. I got the link to the video. Let me share it in the chat. You know what I'm saying, South Texas? Um, I'll put the link to this video here. It's very easy to follow along. And again, you know, he's got the graying ability to gray out the, you know, the stuff while he's recorded. I don't know how he does it, but Shrap knows what's going on, my friend. Digital Function said never had an issue with activity fees. Okay, awesome. Thank you, man. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Wells Fargo another chance. So, guys, uh, look, you know, make sure you do your own homework and do your due diligence about spritz.finance, S P R I T Z dot finance. But I think uh, a way to pay your bills with crypto is um, really, really important, again, because we got to get that utility getting in, right? We got to get utility, and it starts with us as the digital asset space. Remember, we as a whole are just this little teeny minority of the vast majority. You got to understand that. And so when you're out and you're having these conversations, you know, for me, I want to be able to say I pay my bills with crypto. Because the vast majority, right, your neighbor to the left and to the right, your boys, you know, the people, your coworkers, they don't think you can. They don't think you can pay your bills with crypto. Right? They don't think you can live a regular everyday life with the card and go buy dinner and lunch and all of that stuff with crypto. They don't think so. But the reality is you can. What's going on, James Shepard? <laughs> Yo, Siege. What's good with you, James? Appreciate you checking in. So that's the reality. We want to make people, you know, sure people know that. Let me share a little bit more of this video. But I know South Texas Crypto want to know about USDC. And in fact, the crypto dad, South Texas, is using USDC to pay. He uses to pay credit cards and uh, utility bills in this video. The address, the network, and the fees. We'll click uh, both buttons to authorize that. And there we go. We got one more done. All right. So I showed you how to get a couple of bills paid. Oh, forgive the internet. It's really quick and easy. And then I also showed you how to use Polygon to really lower those wallets fees that you're going to, going to incur on the Ethereum network. So uh, uh, that should be enough to get you started to pay some of your bills, dip your toe in the water. You'll find that this is a really fast and easy way to pay bills, and it also eliminates the middleman. I usually had a workflow of transferring crypto over to, say, Coinbase or Binance US, mm -hmm. making a trade to cash, and then withdrawing to my bank. And then once the money was in my bank, I would use that to pay my bills. Now I can pay money directly out of my crypto wallet. And the important thing about uh, using your crypto wallet is you may be earning money with crypto, either a staking platform or a gamify platform or something like that. And so it's really easy to use those earnings to pay your bill directly out of your wallet without having to go through all those steps. And speaking of reducing the number of steps, I'm going to show you how to do the off-ramp, which is uh, a workflow for me as well. Uh, as I mentioned, normally I have to 
uh, transfer crypto to an exchange like Coinbase or Binance US, make a tra trade, and then withdraw to my own bank account. And each of those steps incur some kind of fees. So let's Let's go ahead and try the direct off-ramp. I'll go ahead and add one of my bank accounts. Now you need your account number for this. So I'm going to get that information. I can get that information from my bank statement or, or uh, sign into my account online to get the numbers that I need. Okay, so you guys can watch that video for sure. I put the link of the video in the chat guys so that you can or fam so you can uh so you can definitely check that out as well um oh nice that's nice xrp magnificent says a little thing that i do in the instructions for the amazon person ah in the instructions for the amazon person i tell them i bought the item with crypto very nice very good right getting the word out. And that's going to be the key. And that's our responsibility to, to grow this ecosystem, right? We don't want to be trading amongst each other. We need to expand the size of the pie. And the way we can expand the size of the pie is getting people from the outside that are looking in, educating them on the fact on little things like paying your Amazon stuff with crypto, being able to pay your bills with crypto. And just like the crypto dad just mentioned, you know, there are places, right? Aren't you stake? Are you know some people are staking right now, right? Uh, we're staking in in the in the Adam Cosmos ecosystem, right? Staking Kava, right? But there's places that we're staking that we're earning crypto. There are people right now playing a bunch of crypto games and earning crypto, right? You can take those earnings, right? Turn it into USDC and pay your bills with the earnings, right? Especially if you're spending time playing a game. If you're spending time playing a game, you want to be able to pay your bills. Soren Eagle seventeen seventy six says, "Gosh, gas fees for digital payments. What a joke that is! I'll never buy or hold eat. I hear you, my friend. I hear you. The good thing about it is you can bridge using a Narnia bridge." You can bridge your Ethereum over to Polygon using the Narnia bridge. And the bridging fee is in the pennies. The bridging fee. The Narnia bridge, I'm telling you, family, is game changer. It's Umbria Narnia bridge, Soren Eagle. Let me tell you something. That is something. He's like, I won't even take E for free. He, he's like, he's done. He's done with Ethereum. <laughs> he's like, he's done. And you can bridge um, uh, ETH, USDC, some other stuff. So you can get off of the Ethereum network, right? You can, so you can bridge your USDC over to Polygon and other, other ecosystems and operate in those ecosystems and not have to hang out in DeFi on Ethereum. You can hang out on DeFi on Polygon. You can hang out on DeFi and Phantom. You can hang out on DeFi on the Binance Smart Chain. Umbria and Narnia Bridge, let me tell you something, guys. That is that is something. But I do absolutely 1,000% love the idea of being able to pay my bills. Oh, hold on one second. Sorry, I had to do something with you. James Shepard says Ethereum should be illegal. Think about that, right? They got, we all know about the, the E free pass and how they were able to create this monopoly. Then all of these freaking tokens built upon it. We all know that. We all understand that. Without question, that is the truth, Ruth. But thank God there's ways to get out of that ecosystem and not have to deal with the fees. I mean, thank God uh, for that. Let me share that bridge with you guys real quick. I know I did a live stream about these two platforms before, but I love it. The fastest and low lowest cost cross-chain bridge. 
Bridge your crypto assets between networks with the Narnia. Narnia. Oh, that says Narnia. I'm saying Narnia. <laughs> with the Narnia cross-chain bridge. Bridge assets, you can state. And then there's some stuff here as well. 1,151 liquidity providers. 10x cheaper, 10 times faster. I got to tell you, I've been really, really, really happy with this bridge. I did a transaction, Soaring Eagle. I did a transaction at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And it cost me 48 cents. 48 cents in Ethereum fees. 48 cents. Another time it cost 98 cents. Another time it was 29 cents. Cents. That, those, that's got to be cheaper than using Visa. It was in the pennies. I was, man, I was like, what the world? Available bridge assets. You can bridge the following assets across the, the following cryptocurrency networks using Umbria. So it looks like something called the ghost token, Wrap Bitcoin. What is G-H-S-T? So Wrap Bitcoin, USD Tether, USDC, ETH, Matic, and the UMBR token. So any one of these, you can, bri um, you can bridge any one of those, what is that, three? seven assets and you can bridge it back into a polygon back into ethereum uh oh okay so they got uh so the two main ones is going between polygon and ethereum then on the binance smart chain you can do eth usdc and usct and avalanche you can do uh eth and usdc and on phantom you can do uh phantom arbitrum and arbitrum uh an optimist you can do eth but once you bridge the ETH over to Phantom, it's really, really cheap. Arbitrum and Optimism are not as cheap as Phantom, Avalanche, Binance Smart Chain, and Polygon. But then you can swap it into, uh, you know, you can use one of their swaps and um, swap into USDC, et cetera, et cetera, sector. So there it is there. Now, this seems to be a little bit on the older side because this is quarter two of 2022. So let me do something here real quick. Let's do... There it is there. I did some uh, stuff there. It's Ethereum network. So here are the live networks. Okay. Ethereum, Polychain, Binance, Smart Chain, Avalanche, Phantom, Arbitrum, and Optimism. So yeah, those are the correct ones. So, so Solana and the other ones that are not up and running not up and running yet. I'm telling you, I was really, really impressed with how fast this was. It's bridge.umbria.network, how fast and how inexpensive it is. Because again, we don't have we don't want to have to live on the Ethereum ecosystem. It's just way too much. <laughs> James Shepard says, pay my bills with my Dogecoin. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, so you want to make sure that the asset is a liquid one uh, for sure as far as paying your bills on the Spritz Finance app. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, it's good to know that there are some, 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 some options for sure. I've used the bridge. Uh, I don't like hanging out in the Ethereum ecosystem and paying these crazy, you know, these crazy fees just to make a swap from ETH to USDC or whatever to whatever. Like, it doesn't make any sense, you know, or or a lot of times, uh, uh, what is it, an uh, asset or a platform you might be interested in, right? A token or coin they may be interested in is only available to purchase through uh, the Ethereum decentralized networks, Uniswap or right or any of those things. And I'm like Sushi Swap or whatever it might be on Ethereum. I'm like that is a pain in the ass because that's the only way you can get it is the, through that, through those mechanisms. So uh want to be able to save on these fees whenever we possibly, possibly can. So guys, there it is right there. This word on the street, the banking crisis is real. Wells Fargo will be opening up an account here in the next couple of days. But Wells Fargo, crypto friendly and is in a very safe position in terms of what's going on with the banking crisis. It appears to be in a very, very safe place. I should say it appears to be according to 
the latest uh, research for sure. Legendary says, this is awesome because I have some ETH-based coins that aren't worth cashing out because of the fees. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, and I used to I used to do the, uh, you know, staying up to the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'd stay up to one, two o'clock uh, my time in the morning, sometimes even three in the morning, just to exit a position that was an Ethereum-based token. Because I wasn't trying, like, you know, I'm going to spend $12, $18 for $50. Like, it made no sense. Makes no sense. So there it is, guys. That's the word on the street. Again, the link in the description for uh, the world's fastest VPN, which is my sponsor, Hotspot Shield VPN, especially if you're a gamer, especially if you're in the streaming. And a link in the description for... This spritz finance where you can not only can you off ramp your crypto into your bank account, so sweet. You can also um, pay your bills with crypto. And I just got this sneaking suspicion. Let me stop to share. I got the sneaking suspicion that something consensus and pure or something might be behind that because it allows you to use MetaMask. But again, you can change the network from Ethereum to Polygon and you're good. You're not dealing with those Ethereum fees. I mean, that is. <laughs> you know, so that is very, very interesting. But in the end, if we can create, you know, increase in the size of the pie by letting our neighbors know that we can pay our bills in crypto. You know, I just told Miss Crypto Seas a couple of days ago. She was like, really? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we can pay with them. We used to just using the Coinbase card, right? Um, but because, you know, you can use your visa there. But this is great to be able to use this link, this account to make these payments. So absolutely love that as well. So there it is, fam. That is the word on the street for sure. Be careful out there. Thank you so much for hanging out. Legendary and James Shepard. It's great to see you checking in. Soren Eagle. And R.C. Crawfish, I miss you checking in, bro. I appreciate you being here. XRP Magnificent, it's good to see you, my friend. Jay Corn, as always, Digital Funkster Shrapnels, I appreciate you guys checking in this morning. Uh, we got uh, Michael O2 and Michael Marchese, the OGs on the channel. Appreciate you guys checking in uh, for sure. Alex G, appreciate you being here. Bogle Reed, I appreciate you checking in. Kevin, let's stay in touch, man. Hopefully you got the email for the channel. For sure. Rodwell No Breaker, Thillionaire Age, Kevin Land, Pookie Pookie, Rodwell No Breaker. My guy, South Texas, I appreciate you guys checking in for sure. I'm going to end this live stream uh, like I do all of my live streams and remind you guys <laughs> of this. Old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know, that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya.